What's going on, everybody? Dave here, the Reef Aquarium Shop in Indianapolis, Indiana. I am super excited to be back with you. Uh, last week, Noah was hanging out, talking flower horns, among other things with you guys, and I hope you enjoyed that uh, and getting some perspective from other people in the shop. And that's one thing I'm really hoping to do here uh, in the extremely near future uh, is to allow other employees uh, as well to be jumping in on these videos, uh, both live streams and standard uploads um, to tell you more about their personal knowledge in the hobby um, because uh, everyone has their own expertises as uh, if you've been following along with us here on our YouTube channel, uh, you've kind of been figuring out. Um, so. Uh, one of my goals here is going to be getting uh, guest hosts here on these live streams uh, and having other people talk about products and, and doing things in the hobby uh, on our regular uh, uploads as well. So uh, definitely look forward to that. Uh, welcome, welcome. If you're new uh, and this is your first uh, time joining us, uh, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon. Uh, even if this isn't your first time joining us and if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and do that. We appreciate it a lot. And that's going to tell you every time that we go live uh, and every time we post new content as well. That way you don't miss a thing. Um, so today we're going to be talking about, uh, oh, and before I kind of just jump into things here, um, as you can see in the title, we do have kind of a set topic we're going to be talking about today. Um, but we always treat these as a completely open Q and a, uh, you can ask us anything about aquarium keeping, uh, both saltwater and freshwater. Um, I, uh, my expertise leans more towards freshwater, but I do know a decent amount about, uh, saltwater as well. Uh, we're also going to be talking about, uh, saltwater starter fish in this video too. Um, so whether you are keeping a freshwater tank, saltwater tank, or both, hopefully, because they're both unique and awesome and fun to do and very different, um, but similar. Um, yeah, this is this is for you. <laughs> uh, so again, uh, open Q and A. If you have any questions about the hobby, about the shop, about uh, what we're actually talking about. Uh, feel free to just drop those right in the comments. And even if you aren't watching this live with us, go ahead and drop your questions in the comments as well. And I will come back around when I see those uh, and try to get those answered for you. Um, so what is new here at the reef? So, um, usually I'll take a minute to talk about our, uh, online store. Uh, we do have a website, uh, the reef which I, I forgot to honestly even, uh, set it up for screen share because, uh, we don't have any new product on it. And usually I try to showcase any new product that we've tossed up on the website. Uh, there, uh, hasn't been any new stuff since I, uh, have been back anyway, but, uh, we are on the cusp of launching a bunch of cool new products out there. I know I've been talking about being able to get a hold of rocks, driftwood, and substrates on our website. Um, we are very near completion on that. Uh, and then after that happens, we are going to be dipping our toes into actually shipping live freshwater plants. Uh, we are super excited uh, about that. And a lot of you have just been like pretty much begging us to start shipping our plants. And, and you know, we get it. We have uh, we have a huge uh, variety uh, as far as our inventory goes of our freshwater plants. And so a lot of people uh, have really been asking us to, to be able to share that online because we do have uh, we you know, we're in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, we do have people coming in all over from all over the Midwest to, to visit us. Uh, but sometimes uh, if if you're not in the state, especially, uh, it can be a bit of a trek to get to us. Uh, so uh, us being able to chip some live plants would uh, be super handy for you guys, I believe. Um, so um, crossing fingers, this isn't set in stone, but we are hoping to have uh, that set by June or July. I think one of the biggest things we're waiting on at this point for live plants um, there's, there's a couple things, but one of the biggest things we're waiting on is just the weather to warm up. This is our first time. This is our first go at it. You know what I mean? So, um, and once we start releasing these, uh, freshwater plants, we're probably going to be doing that hand in hand with corals. Um, it's, I assume they're not going to be launched at the same time. Um, but we'll, we'll see how it actually happens. But 
we're uh we're we're wanting to get through uh the winter uh for shipping issues that and i mean i'm i'm sure as you guys have uh noticed uh potentially the uh mail <laughs> has been uh, a touch slow um and, and that, that'll happen uh but we are through the holidays now so that will uh help out a, with that a lot i'm sure but uh, but yeah, that's where we're on track uh, for for the website. Um, lots of uh, lots of stuff still happening in shop. If you haven't been in uh, recently or in a little while, uh, the next time you're in, you'll probably notice that we have a paging system. Uh, just like if you were to go into a restaurant and be waiting at a table, they hand you that little uh, pager, and then it'll just whenever <laughs> you're uh, you're next up, whenever you're ready to be seated. Same thing. Uh, you're going to take one of those pagers. You're free to roam the store and continue doing your shopping. Uh, and then uh, once uh, you, uh, once we are available to help you out and grab fish for you and talk to you one on one um, and, and get you taken care of there, uh, we'll buzz you over. You just return to where you you picked up the the buzzer from. And uh, we'll get you helped out. Um, it, it is a new system, uh, so we are still working out a, a few kinks here and there. But overall, it is going very well. So uh, we're we're pretty excited to be able to offer that and actually um, uh, get you taken care of uh, in both a timely fashion and an orderly fashion. Um, <laughs> we. We were having a bunch of issues of just people ending up getting skipped because we would just move on to the right, the next closest customer, you know, once we were done with one. If you've been in the shop, you know, uh, especially on the weekends, it just it can get pretty slammed. Um, I mean, we're we're busy all throughout the week. At, honestly, no matter what time of day at this point, um, to be honest with y'all, um, which is an amazing thing to have happened. Um, but again, we are constantly busy. So. Um, if we are busy with other customers, grab one of those uh, pagers and we will get to you. All right, let's get to the topic at hand. Um, and again, uh, this is an open Q&A. Welcome to all those joining in uh, and, and hanging out with us. Appreciate it. If you do have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Um, and if I see those, I'll get to those. Uh, outside of that, I'm going to start rambling about starter fish. So, um, if you were lucky, you got a brand new fish tank this Christmas, <laughs> and uh, it is now time to kind of get, you should be through um, your cycling uh, process at this point, or at least mostly. We are one month, if you set this up Christmas day, which I set my, <laughs> well, I didn't get a new tank. I got my entire family fish tanks for Christmas, um, and the, uh and they were extremely excited and we had to set them up immediately. <laughs> so, uh, um, so yeah, uh, we've been doing a lot of, uh, tank setting and all, all my family's tanks are now in the, uh, through the process of cycling, except for one of them. Uh, one of them is being stubborn and kind of holding on the average cycling process takes anywhere from if you're super, super lucky, uh, two weeks. Um, and if you're super unlucky, probably around six weeks. And I've seen it go shorter and longer, depending on uh, several factors. And of course, there's things you can do to speed this up. Um, I always add uh, seed or stability um, or some sort of bacterial stabilizer. Uh, and that will typically cut the time in half. So you're looking at more of a um, uh, one to three week uh, process instead of a two to six week process, typically. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you should be through your cycling process at this point, and now you are looking at putting your very first fish in. Now, if you are uh, also, if you are uh, not at this step yet and are encountering other things or haven't even set up your aquarium, check out our main channel, and there are a lot of different how-tos, quick explanation videos for starters. Uh, it's been a goal of mine to kind of, uh, when I'm creating this new content, um, and we've only been doing this steadily for about a year now um, as far as YouTube content goes but I my intention was to kind of as far as my how-to videos anyway start from the beginning and and kind of work you through uh, different questions and problems that might arise as they would potentially arise as you're keeping it you know what I mean I if that's coming across clear. So I'm trying to stage this up. Anyway, so here's our next part of the process, uh, selecting the first fish. But if you need any information on uh, the process 
before we're putting our first fish into the tank, check out our main channel. Uh, you're going to find a lot of good information there. I'm also going to be popping up um, little uh, banners up here with links to certain videos uh, that will be applicable to beginners here as well. Um, and you know, I'm not all. Uh, I'm not specifically just talking to beginners here. Uh, there are a lot of actually great starter fish out there. Um, when I stay, say starter fish, at least for for freshwater, danios are the, almost always the first thing that pops to everyone's mind. Uh, for saltwater, uh, damsels and chromis are almost always the first thing to pop into your mind uh, when you think about starter fish. And these are of course, fantastic starter fish. There's a reason they're well known as being starter fish, but there are a lot more that you could do. Um, a lot of people don't want to start with Danios because maybe they're doing a, a, a completely different style tank there, or Danios just aren't for them. They're not a fan. Um, and, and it can be a hassle. Um, you know, some people will put a uh, starter fish in that they don't necessarily intend to keep in that tank. Uh, they'll just be pulling them out later uh, to put the fish they want in. Um, but Danios can be a huge pain uh, to try to get back out of that tank, depending on how big it is. I mean, even in some smaller tanks that they would fit in, um, it's it can be a task trying to pull a bunch of Danios out because they are quick, constant movers. You know, they're just, they're they're crafty little guys. They're gonna get away from you. Uh, they're some of the fastest swimmers uh, that you can that you can get in your tank. So. Uh, they can be a little tough. So I'm going to go over uh, several fish that are both in saltwater and freshwater. They're actually going to uh, be pretty cool that you can stick in your tank uh, as a, a first fish. So um, typically, so I, I'm going to backtrack a touch and talk about the cycling process a little more. And there's several ways that you can cycle an aquarium. Um, and if you've done a fishless cycle, then you don't have any fish in the, in the tank yet. Um, if you're cycling with fish, uh, really there are actually only a couple that I would recommend uh, cycling a tank with. Um, so I do want to make the distinction that I am separating uh, a, a fish that you would cycle the tank with to your first like initial intentional inhabitants of the tank, if that makes sense. So uh, to cycle a tank freshwater wise, uh, I really don't do anything uh, but Danios or, uh, or even a beta. Beta is my most common one if I'm going to do a fish in cycle. Nine times out of 10, personally, I'm doing a fish less cycle um, in which I'm just adding bacterias from uh, another tank that I have to start the whole process. Um, so uh, yes, if it is, if you're using this fish to cycle, um, again, go with like Danios or a beta or something like that. Um, and if you can do a fishless cycle, it's just easier on everybody that way, um, you and definitely the fish. Um, the biggest thing I will say about cycling, and then I'm going to leave that, um, and move on to the actual topic at hand is don't use goldfish or feeder fish, either, even, even just feeder fish. If they're guppies, even don't just don't, 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 <laughs> uh, they, they are going to goldfish in particular, are just not what you want in your tank, unless you're trying to go for a goldfish tank, in which case, um, feeder goldfish aren't going to be what you want to put in there anyway. Um, also, uh, with both the goldfish and like feeder guppies and things of that nature, uh, right off the bat, you have potential to bring um, parasites and disease into your tank because feeder fish are intended to be fed to other fish and aren't cared for as well uh, as your more ornamental fish, uh, so to speak. So uh, don't do it. Don't start with feeders. <sighs> Moving on. I'm going to talk about the uh, best starter fish. So we've already discussed Danios. Those are your standards. And there are a bunch of different types of them. Um, oh, uh, before I, I do want to mention um, uh, back, to, <laughs> back to cycling, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I do want to make this both inclusive, uh, more inclusive of both saltwater and freshwater. In saltwater, never do a fish in cycle. Um, use, use live rock, use live sand, um, and, and create your beneficial bacteria that way. Uh, when I'm setting it up, I usually, uh, just do my hard escape, uh, doing my rock, sand, water, 
you know, all the equipment, get it up and running. I'm letting it run for about a week or two before I even add like snails, shrimp, crabs, things of that nature. I'm adding my cleaner crew in next and then waiting another, you know, week or two at least. So I'm usually like three to four weeks in before I even add my first fish into a saltwater system. So there's that. Starter fish, going back to freshwater, Danios, awesome. One of the hardiest fish in the hobby that you can get. Um, these are, the uh, Danios are so hardy that they're the most common fish that you're going to find in like research labs and things of that nature. Um, Danios are gonna be the ones the ones used when we're, when we're looking at um, certain properties and, and researching certain things in fish, typically. Um, also, there's a bunch of different varieties of them. There's the standard zebra danio, which is probably what everyone thinks about when they're thinking about a danio. Um, but there's other ones too. Uh, leopards look just like straight up like micro salmon. <laughs> they're spotted all the way through. They look really cool. Uh, and another one of my favorites uh, are the pearls. Oh, the pearls are super cool. Like fluorescent pastels, <laughs> like pinks and purples. It's super neat. Um, Google image that and find you a really nice picture of a, of a pearl danio and you're not going to want any other danios from there on out. Uh, and then of course there's your others uh, like your uh, the blue uh, danios, gold danios, and these are just color derivatives typically of your uh, zebras and uh, leopards. Uh, so they're going to have the, I typically see the gold danios with stripes and the zebra or the blue danios with spots. Uh, that makes a difference to you. But again, probably the most common, uh, the number one uh, pick for a starter uh, is typically going to be danios. Uh, now, there are definitely others that you could be using to start your tank with. Uh, another one of my favorites is uh, there's several tetras uh, that are great for starting a freshwater tank with. Um, my first go-to is usually pristillas. Um, and they are a super underrated tetra. They are gorgeous. And the reason they're super underrated is because their actual body is is just gray. Um, but, uh, and, and they don't actually have a great pop of color to them unless you get the gold pristillas. Um, then they have more of an albino style base to the body. Uh, but what's really cool about them is their dorsal fins. There's this solid uh, white, black, white, pattern on that dorsal and it's very very prominent and when you get them in a group together uh, those little dorsals will flick up and down uh, and you can even you can spot an individual fish from across the room they're awesome again again super hardy super underrated uh, and a great addition to just about any community tank um, other tetras that are great to start with have typically been um, Bloodfin tetras. They're a very similar fish to a Danio. They're a longer styled tetra with bright, bright red fins, as you might be able to tell from the name Bloodfin tetra. Um, hey, what's going on, Nicole? Joe, just noticing dropping in. I see some uh, questions there in the comments, and I'll get to those in just a moment. Uh, but again, if you are just joining us, we do like to treat this as an open Q&A. So drop your questions in the comments below and I will get to those. And those can, it can be about starter fish. Uh, it can be about aquarium keeping in general, both saltwater, freshwater, about the uh, the store, the reef aquarium shop here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, or yeah, just, just about any anything aquarium keeping related. Uh, you can drop your questions about that in the comments. Um, so again, welcome to, uh, welcome if you're uh, just joining us talking about starter fish, we've talked about Danios, talked about some Pristilla Tetras, uh, we've just talked about Bloodfin Tetras, uh, and then another one of my favorite Tetras as a starter is, is the Serpe Tetra. Fantastic, uh, bright red fish. Um, super cool. Um, and there's uh, actually several other uh, Tetras that I will consistently recommend as uh, starters, like uh, Phantom, uh, Black Phantom Tetras are great. Um, I usually I usually don't use, and some I've seen some people recommend them as starters, and I do not agree. Um, I agree that they've gotten a lot hardier over the years, but Neon Tetras and Cardinal Tetras, um, they're a great staple and they're a gorgeous fish. I, they're just, they're just still too sensitive in my opinion to be a starter fish, even if the tank is already cycled through. Um, 
yeah, I, I usually just wait to uh, let my tank age out a little bit before I'm before I'm doing something something like uh, neons or, or cardinals or anything like that. But still, plenty of tetra options. Um, also, in the kind of community range, uh, we've got uh, garamis. Garamis, um, well, betas are garamis, and since I've <laughs> uh, nominated beta as probably the best fish to cycle a tank with, if you're going to do a fish in cycle. Um, I, which I recommend trying a fish less cycle. Um, but if you're going to do a fish in, betas make a great one because they have that labyrinth lung that can take, uh, they can take, uh, I guess, some abuse. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so garamis um, are the same family as betas. They have that labyrinth lung uh, mechanism uh, that allows them to breathe from the surface, um, making them a little more tolerant of water conditions. Um, and it can still be a little wonky up there in the front, especially when you're adding your first fish in um, and you've done a fishless cycle, you're, you're gonna be changing your water chemistry up when you do that. You know, add, you're adding more ammonia into the tank or actually your first steady source of ammonia into the tank if you've not been doing fish in. Um, so yeah, things are things are gonna change in the tank. So these fish do need to be uh, fairly hardy still, um, even if, again, you've gone through your, your cycling process. Um, so one of my favorites, and if you watch our live streams on uh, Facebook where we do room tours every week, every Thursday, check it out, uh, the Reef Indie, uh, if you wanna look us up over there, but we do that every Thursday, go through the rooms and give you kind of a tour of what's new and what's still there that's cool. Um, but every time I come across honey garamis, I always have to tell you how much I love them uh, and how great they are. Uh, they stay nice and small. Um, they're gonna get like mm, two inches, one and a half, two inches uh, for the honey garamis. Um, and there's a couple different varieties, uh, color variants of them. I think they're all the same fish. Correct me if I'm wrong and you know, uh, know better, but um, I think they're just color variants of the same fish. Uh, there's gonna be like the red honey and um, there's gonna be like your, your gold sunset, which is like a honey garami. Um, but uh, but yeah, they're all they're all fantastic um, and and do great. And I do find that they work out better as a starter fish than your standard dwarf garamis, like your neon flame cobalt uh, blues or powder blues. Um, those um, actually can tend to be jerks. You kind of got a hit or miss. Uh, a lot of your like two spot garamis, like your your standard garamis, like the blue, gold, uh, platinum, things of that nature, they can definitely be jerks and, and people typically know about that. But when you're thinking about a dwarf garami, people usually say, oh yeah, community fish. Regular dwarf garamis aren't, they're like a hit and miss. It's 50-50. Sometimes you get uh, a dwarf garami that's going to be completely community, totally chill. And every now and then you just get a total jerk that's going to go after your fish. And it's kind of a hassle. It's a, it's a stressor for both you and the other fish in the tank. Uh, so that's more uh, why I recommend the honey garamis specifically uh, as a great starter fish. Um, and there's some other uh, garami species as well. They're all going to still be in that dwarf category. Uh, most of your other garami species can, can be jerks. Um, but if you are going for a semi-aggressive tank, standard garamis are also another fantastic starter fish for you to go for. So if you're going for like your end goal is maybe like a semi-aggressive oddball tank, which is one of my favorite setups to do. Um, and you're, you're trying to do like, uh, like, like tiger barbs and some cool catfish and maybe like a leopard tenopoma or, you know, uh, something like that. Yeah, go with like a, well... I take back that leopard tenopoma because tenopomas are in the garami family as well. And garamis typically don't play well together. So uh, again, uh, if you're going for a semi-aggressive, uh, yeah, um, the the garamis make a fantastic starter fish and first in into the tank. Um, also, I mean, I guess I just mentioned them, but if you're doing uh, semi-aggressive tiger barbs, make a first in as well. They're they're like the, the they're the Danio of the barbs. <laughs> they're super hardy, um, and just about any of those barb species are going to do pretty well as starters. Also, there's the cherry barbs, the gold barbs. If we're going more community, um, and, which you know, I'm attempting to kind of hit across all platform or all uh, all styles of tanks here for you, because you know there's different options. Uh, depending on what 
what you want to end up with. Some of us don't even know what they want to end up with. And that's that's when I always say, just go community right off the bat then. Um, Danios and fast moving Tetras, nothing with long fins. Um, and that's going to give you options in the end uh, to get a potentially semi-aggressive fish. Because if you put something in there, like let's say you're going into your, your first stocking, and you don't really know uh, what you want to keep in the tank and you're just going to kind of play it by ear and add them as you go. That's fantastic. That's awesome. That's typically how I'm putting together my tanks. Um, you know, it's about a 50-50. Sometimes I'll set up a tank for the aquascape uh, and then put my fish in and figure it out after that. Sometimes I'm setting up a tank for the fish uh, and then figuring everything else out around the fish not uh, the, the either way isn't the wrong way they're just different ways so if you're going in not knowing what you're going to do in the future um uh, something community with shorter fins is going to be your best bet and going to allow you um, more options down the road if you're not trying to take those fish out in the future which it can again i we, we were talking about this a little bit before but that can be a huge pain trying to pull fish out of uh, an existing aquarium because they're not exactly what you wanted to go for it's way easier to do like a full reset than a partial reset on your tank and pull like specific fish out what's going on ryan Ryan Noel hanging out with us in the comments. If you remember a couple weeks, last week was Noah. Um, week before that, uh, we were hanging out uh, here on stream with Ryan talking plants. If you missed that, definitely go check it out. It has been uh, definitely been one of our more popular live streams. Uh, people are super digging it. Uh, and, and, and you should too. So go watch it if you haven't. Uh, and if you have, go watch it again. It's good. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're back here talking about starter fish. And again, if you have more than just questions, if you want to input in and, and drop your two cents, by all means, uh, treat this as an, I may not have uh, a, another talking head next to me, uh, but please, by all means, uh, treat this as uh, any one of you, treat this as a, uh, a, a just a conversation. If you have some favorites that you use uh, as your starter fish, drop them in the comments below. Let's talk about it. Um, so we've kind of talked about your standards. Um, so we've talked, uh, like the Danios, we've talked about uh, a few of the Tetra species that people pass over as starter fish all the time. And it's just kind of, they kind of just pass those fish over in general. And I'm not sure why they're great fish. Um, we've talked about, uh, going into more semi-aggressives. If you know what you want to do with your tank and it's going to end up being a semi-aggressive to potentially aggressive tank, um, uh, Garamis, uh, some tiger barbs. Uh, things of that nature will go great. Um, if you are trying to set up an aggressive tank, um, honestly, there's no great starter fish for an aggressive tank. Usually, uh, usually I'm just starting off with the, let, let's go, let's talk cichlids specifically. Usually, like, let's say I'm setting up an African cichlid tank. My starter fish are African cichlids. Uh, it's typically not going to be anything else. Uh, now, if I want to be careful and, and, and ease into it, because when you're adding African cichlids, you know, those are a special circumstance. You're typically adding anywhere from three to five or potentially more at a time, or you should be uh, because of aggression issues. And, and you don't want to add a, a ton at once uh on the on your first load of fish into your tank that is going to spike your ammonia wreck you and you're back at day one with your cycle it's a pain so so take your time when you're adding your first fish and you don't want to do too many uh, do like the bare minimum um and and kind of ride with that for a minute and just let your tank slowly ease into the the, the incremental amounts of ammonia uh, that you're going to be sticking into the tank. Let your beneficial bacterias also develop with that waste so that you don't end up with a crash, because you will. Uh, so again, that being said, starter fish for more aggressive tanks. Um, so like I said, typically we're going to be starting with those fish themselves because anything you put in there off the bat is probably going to uh, get uh eaten or bullied or killed or something something like that uh so if you don't mind necessarily losing those fish and a lot of people are going to be tell me this is cruel to say but 
it happens in the wild. A lot of people are just going to stick Danios in as their general starter fish, uh, and eventually those are going to become feeder fish. Um, to each their own. I'm typically not, uh, I'm personally uh, not doing it that way most of the time. I have in the past for sure. Um, and it's not that I felt bad about it. Again, it happens in the wild. Um, it's just not my, my favorite method. Uh, I, I, again, much prefer to uh, put in what I want in there and not have to pull anything out. Um, or, you know, I'm, a lot of times I'm just going for a certain aesthetic. Uh, and again, uh, like I was saying in the beginning, if you're starting an aggressive tank, please do not use feeder fish as your starter fish. Um, that's, you're just, you're asking for trouble. You could, you could get away scot-free with it. Plenty of people do. Um, but if you do it, you're just asking for potential trouble at least. Um, so yeah, uh, Ryan mentioned white clouds are, uh, and Joe uh, talking about white clouds. White clouds are another one of my favorites. That's what I used in my axolotl tank, um, which, Again, why do I always try to hit these controversial topics? <laughs> um, but uh, if you're going to keep anything with a um, with an axolotl, it's generally uh, accepted that white clouds are going to be the the thing that works out best, and that's what I uh, cycled my axolotl tank with is white clouds, and they're still in there today. They haven't been eaten. Um, and they, they leave those axes alone. Um, not 100% always the case. Uh, look into it. Do your research. I'm not going to go into that spiel right now. Maybe later. Uh, if you're interested, let me know. Uh, and that could definitely be a future topic. But uh, axolotls in general, I'm not going to fill <laughs> any good portion of time telling you about um, uh, uh, white clouds and, and axolotls. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, those are those are kind of your basic starter fish for uh, freshwater. Um, plenty of others uh, to to talk about, honestly. But most people don't even know that there's good starter fish out there beyond just danios. Um, and you might notice that I actually have avoided talking about live bearers. That is intentional. Five years ago, I would have told you that just about any live bearer makes a great starter fish, and I don't believe that to be the case anymore. Um, if you've been in the shop in the last two to three months, you've noticed that there's not a lot of fancy guppies in stock, and they haven't been back. <laughs> um, we've done our best and pulled from local breeders and things of that nature, but uh, supply and demand um, is, 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 it's huge for these because they're, they're beautiful fish, but they're, the, the health has not held up over the years. Uh, live bearers, if you're familiar with them, they pump out babies constantly. Uh, and because of that, when you're, when you're actually, uh, breeding live bearers, um, in mass to, uh, you know, send out to, uh, stores and, and things of that nature, uh, uh, inbreeding is a uh, is definitely a problem. <laughs> We're just over time getting less and less hardy fish, and the more uh, the more uh, sorry the more specific the strain um, of guppy as far as like let's let's talk like uh, German blues or the uh, the the blonde flamingos or you know things of that nature anything that's very specific like that uh they're going for a particular quality so uh so what that's called is line breeding um and they're and they end up uh in in line breeding they're going to uh, they're just going to be joining very similarly related fish together for the most part um and and yeah that's just weakened live bearers in general that's uh, i'm kind of talking specifically about guppies and that's the, what it's affected hands down what it's affected the most. Um, but it's definitely starting to affect other live bears out there for sure. Um, so for that reason, I don't typically recommend them as a starter, uh, anymore where I used to maybe the one, maybe what I would recommend as a starter, if I were going to recommend a live bearer would be platies. But, um, I tend to, I tend to not use those as starter fish, especially in a smaller tank. Platies um, put out a lot of waste comparatively to other live bears. 
um, I've uh, I've kept platy specific tanks like species only tanks, and they've been some of my dirtiest tanks outside of maybe goldfish. <laughs> um, just they were constantly pooping. It wasn't even it, it almost wasn't even attractive anymore. And I, and I say this uh, with with still a a, a, a huge love for for platies and i would set up a platy tank in a heartbeat especially if i've got my hands on a nice line of variatus um but they were just constantly going to the bathroom in the tank and, and it was noticeable uh and they made a huge huge mess so uh, again that's kind of why you haven't heard me talk about live bears because I, I i don't stand behind them as as uh, as starters anymore i don't think the line is is um strong enough or the the species are strong enough at this point in time not to say uh that you should steer clear of live bearers as far as keeping them in general i would just be more cautious and treat them as a uh not a beginner fish anymore uh treat them as more of an intermediate care level um and and run them through some some quarantine and, and hit them with some salts or something um when you're sticking them in your tank which i recommend anyway because uh, a lot of your live bears are, are gonna be brackish um I have done enough babbling. I'm still going to get to saltwater uh, starter fish, which again, I'm, I'm definitely, my, my knowledge base is definitely more in freshwater, but I do know plenty about saltwater and starter fish is definitely something I know about in saltwater. But before I get into that, let's jump into these, uh, yours are over there. Let's jump into these comments. <laughs> uh, Nicole. What's going on, Nicole? Says, I started my first freshwater aquascape for the new year and cannot thank you enough for suggesting ember tetras from a while ago. Those are, those in my cherry shrimp are doing amazing. Yes, ember tetras are so good. Uh, and I've used those. Uh, those are actually really hardy too. They're just, um, they're just tiny. They stay nice and small, which are great for uh, nano tanks and, uh, and and things of that nature. Um, there's not a, in in a really tight space. Uh, there's not a lot of schooling fish that you can um, that you can uh, safely do. Um, but embers are definitely one of those. So, ah, oh, Nicole, I'm really glad that you liked those. Uh, again, they're one of my personal favorites. Uh, and, and once you, uh, once you've been keeping those for long enough, uh, you may have heard me, well, I mean, yes, you heard me talk about, you're going to be able to see them from across the room. Um, cause they're just, they will glow like an ember. There's a reason for that name. Um, it's not just, uh, oh, that's a, you know, a dullish orange fish. I think I'll call it an ember tetra. No, they get even better. If you like them now, just wait. Um, oh, Ryan says Harlequin Rasboras. Absolutely. And I do know that you love your Harlequin Rasboras, uh, as we saw a couple weeks ago in some of your, uh, in some of your photos. Um, uh, but yes, Harlequin Rasboras. And I guess, uh, they're not tetras, but I can kind of toss these into that tetra family, uh, of those, uh, fish that we've been talking about earlier, such as the Pristillas, the blood fins, uh, and the, um, the phantoms, serpes, uh, definitely toss harlequins in that list as well. Uh, they are a very similar care, very similar hardiness, uh, and they look fantastic really nice two-tone um fish I have, well more than two tones but the main ones you see are kind of like a, almost uh it's, it's not even black it's like a super dark blue with a streak of uh, orange through it um you gotta see it to believe it man speaking of streak of orange what just came to my mind um is glow light tetras those are fantastic, but have not been readily available in quite a while. And I wonder why that is. I'll find out. <laughs> if I do find out, I'll let you know later. Uh, and yes, we were talking about uh, white clouds. Uh, and then Joe uh, was talking about the live bearers, which um, again, uh, what I was talking about earlier uh, was definitely my own personal opinion about live bearers. Um, if you use live bearers as a starter, um, as come at some of your first ends, absolutely. Again, they are great fish. Um, they're just not quite as hardy as they used to be. And I and and Joe, I would have been with you right there with you, like five, five, even like three or four years ago. Um, yeah, at this point, especially guppies specifically, again, uh, most of that conversation was directed mostly towards guppies and different guppy strains in general. The rest of them are, are have been doing pretty well, but I'm seeing some telltale signs coming up and 
they may just go the way of the guppies as well. Hopefully, we can avoid that. Um, Ooh, patio. Yes. Uh, Ryan again says white clouds are awesome too. Love them for the patio ponds during the summer. Patio ponds during the summer are great. And I know we're sitting in the middle of, uh, we're almost into February now, y'all. January is almost done. We're almost to spring. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess I don't have to cross my fingers for that. Um, I'll, I'll cross my fingers for Puxatani Phil. <laughs> and, and hope spring comes soon. I'm ready for it. Um, the sooner the warmer weather comes in, the sooner we get to ship plants from our website. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, they are super social and a very cool fish to keep. Uh, we've definitely been digging on white clouds. Uh, good question, Joe. Uh, Joe asks, do you know if rummy nose tetras can survive in Indiana hard water? Nope, they can't. And it's unfortunate. And there will be people that, anything I say, there's going to be people that disagree with me. But the biggest contention is that uh, they have gotten hardier over the years. Um, but that uh, that just doesn't change their, their, their biology. They don't, just like... So people have been keeping uh, discus, uh, which are some of the most sensitive fish in the freshwater side of the hobby um, in Indiana tap water for years. And I'm not with it. <laughs> there are plenty of people who are super successful, um, but I have noticed that um, in their success, they've lost a lot of fish to get there. Um, Yes. Is it possible to get rummy does to live in Indiana hard water? Some of them, yeah. But you're gonna lose you're gonna lose some to uh, kind of build up a actual school, and it's just still not the best environment for them. So I'd soften that water to at least like seven five at, at the highest is typically what I'm going with. And again, you know what I'm what I'm saying is general guidelines and people have broken those rules and you know both successfully and unsuccessfully uh but in general i wouldn't recommend trying it no um unless you're prepared uh for uh loss um oh yes ryan i know i'll keep coming back to you but you're uh you're talkative today <laughs> not a question but i'm so stoked that you're stocking some uns rimless tanks and onf twin star lights amazing stuff I very much agree with you. And this is, uh, this is something that has been requested for us from, uh, from multiple people is to bring in the, uh, the Altum nature systems, uh, rimless tanks. Um, the reason we hadn't before was just a supplier issue. Um, uh, and it, there wasn't quite as much of a demand, uh, back when we were looking into it. So, uh, over the past year or so, uh, we've gotten even more requests to bring these in. And when you ask, we, we absolutely do our best to accommodate you. If you don't, if there's something you can't find in our store that you want before going online, uh, especially if you're a, a local and a regular, ask us first, ask us to bring it in. Uh, and even if it's just specifically for you, if you're, if we're able to do like a one-off and not have to like get a pallet of something <laughs> just to get you one thing, we will absolutely do that for you. If we can get a hold of it, it'll be in your hands, hopefully within a few days to a week. Um, so yeah, just ask, um, which is what happened with these. And I just so happened to have one of these sitting right next to me. Um, and I'm going to show that off. Uh, so this, uh, so Ultimate Nature uh, is uh, a really just kind of, I'm going to get rid of your uh, your comment here, Ryan, so I can show this off a little better. Uh -huh. uh, so this is an Ultimate Nature uh, Systems tank, rimless, and I'm about to pull this box off so you can see, uh, but we have been uh, doing photo shoots with these. Uh, and that is actually going to be uh, a part of uh, adding that hardscape into our website. Uh, so again, soon you'll be able to get uh, driftwood uh, and rocks in a what you see, what you get format. You will literally be able to get the actual rock you're looking at on, on the website. Like, I want that particular rock. 
cool. We only have that one in stock. It's yours is gone. Um, I'm super excited about that actually because I don't see that a lot. You see, you see what you is what you see what you get uh, on uh, corals mostly, um, and and sometimes plants, but you typically don't see that on uh, things such as uh, hardscape. So I'm very excited to. Uh, we are very excited. Uh, I am also very excited, but the company is very excited to bring that to you. Um, so uh, these are, this is one of the many uh, options that we are one of the many different tanks that we brought in uh, from Ultimate. As you can see, we've got some substrate in there. So um, a little thick, but this is uh, one of their low, really small ones. Does it say uh, it is four gallons, four gallons. They call it a cube. It's not a cube. It's smaller than a cube. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're great. Uh, and just the quality of glass on these and the craftsmanship is superb. There is definitely, it, there's definitely a reason these are one of the most sought after tanks on the market currently. Um, so we have them in stock now. Uh, and then uh, Ryan again was talking about those, um, uh, the lights we got in, um, the ONF and the Twin Stars. Uh, these, again, are the, uh, the, the, those are those lights that you're going to see over those super fancy rimless setups. Um, they're just, they're crisp. They're, they look really nice. <laughs> um, if you want to uh, check those out, and again, I actually didn't set up my screen share before I went live today um, because I didn't think I was going to have anything to show you because I usually uh, go with new products on the website and, and show you guys those. Um, otherwise, I'd bring it up. But um, I'm actually, let me uh, write this for you right now. Um, and if I get it wrong, I'm sorry, but I'm actually going to send you over to Ryan's Instagram. Uh, I'm going to post a link to that and you can see his tanks, um, with, uh, the similar lighting, uh, that you can get from, uh, get from the reef. Uh -huh. There you are. All right. So, uh, again, if you were watching our, um, our live stream a couple weeks ago, I was talking to the aquascaping rhino. Uh, which is Ryan that we're talking to here in the in the comments, and he's uh, hyping up these UNFs and, and, and these lightings for good reason, and I'm about to show you why, um, uh, or you're about to go see why. I'm not hooking up uh, to screen share, but I'm just going to drop the link uh, in the comments here to his Instagram. Definitely go check that out. Jump on your phone uh, if you're on your computer so you can watch us both at the same time. Um, yeah, check that out. And I'm just going to pop it up in the banner here as well, just so you can see it. There it is right there. So check that out and you're going to see some really cool tanks, um, some really nice lights, uh, and all of those and more are available at the shop now. Um, so again, that's something we're very excited to be able to uh, start offering uh, for you guys. Um, it's it's something that's been long awaited. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see what other questions we got going on. Uh -huh. Man, you guys are getting, getting talkative today. Excellent. Um... Hansel, great question. I put a piece of wood in my tank and the brown tannins are not going away. Uh, I've done 50% water changes. Should I take it out? No, uh, because it's just going to keep doing that. Uh, if you put it back into, like if you take it out and just put it into another tank or something like that, it's it's going to stop, Hansel. I, I swear it will. <laughs> um, so there's a couple things you can do about this. So driftwood, uh, and then some driftwood is way worse at this than other driftwoods, but uh, driftwood will uh, release tannins into the water. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with tannins, um, that same process happens with tea. If you're uh, steeping a bag of tea, the what actually is coloring that water uh, is the tannins uh, released out of the tea leaves. So the wood will leach out tannins into your aquarium, uh, giving you this uh, dark brownish, sometimes orangish, almost, uh, almost, 
I don't want to say muddy because it's that's that's not a great word for it, but yeah. Um, some people actually uh, really dig this. I'm one of those, actually. Uh, there's a lot of people that will intentionally put these tannins into their tank uh, because that's just natural. Anyway, you want to see your fish. <laughs> you want to get rid of these tannins. Uh, and there's a couple ways to do that. You can take out the piece of wood and uh, boil it for about 30, 40 minutes or so um, if you have a, a pot big enough to do so. Uh, if not, you can pull it out and soak it elsewhere, um, like in uh, in a bucket or in a, in a big old, a big tub or something. Uh, you're just gonna let it tan it up. You're gonna dump that water, refill the water and rinse and repeat that until it stops leaching tannins, um, which eventually it's going to stop leaching tannins. It'll stop, get it all out. Um, it's just a waiting game. Um, some tank, uh, some pieces of wood I've had leech tannins for a very long time. Like now, now granted, I'm, I'm talking, this was a solid piece of wood. It's not spider wood. It was, it was a, it was a chunk. It was a mass and it leached for like a year. What I did to combat that and without, cause obviously I didn't have a pot big enough to, to boil that and pull the tannins out. Um, cause that will pull the tannins out is boiling it. Um, you do want to make sure that you don't put it directly back into the tank. Um, you want to let that air dry like overnight or for like 24 hours before sticking it into your tank. Uh, otherwise you're going to mess up with the, uh, temperature in your, in your water and that could affect your fish. So don't do that. Um, but, uh, other way is to remove the tannins without removing the wood from your tank is to add some sort of resin media into your tank, such as a uh, cobalt total complete or total freshwater um, or uh, purigen from Seachem. These are all going to pull the tannins out of the water. Um, and what's nice about... Um, What's nice about both of those, I was going to point out specifically just the Purigen, uh, but they actually both can be recharged. You just do it in different ways between the Cobalt uh, brand um, and the Seachem brand of resins. Um, but yeah, you can actually recharge them um, and reuse those uh, to an extent, uh, at least a few times. Um, yeah, that's super awesome at pulling tannins right out of the water. So grab yourself some Purigen stick it in your filtration and that's going to suck the tann tannins right out. Um, outside of that, it's not hurting anything. If you can live with it or you're, or you like it, uh, your fish really like it. It's, it's not hurting them any, um, I guess, unless they're a, a hard water fish and then they don't like it as much, but, um, most fish are going to be totally fine with, uh, all those tannins in their, in, in the water. Um, it's more natural. It's, it's what they're actually going to, to prefer, uh, over a clear tank. <laughs> um, but we are trying to look at them. So sometimes that, uh, sometimes that takes us pulling those tannins out of the water. Um, Ooh, yes, Hansel. I, I recommend it. We have some really cool bonsais in the uh, shop right now. And just to clarify, because we do carry house plants, um, we're not talking about, uh, live living bonsais. These are, um, essentially driftwood pieces, uh, that are put together in the form of a bonsai. Um, and their little branches don't have any live plants on them or anything. What you do is, uh, well, you can, if you want, is you are going to take uh, the uh, the bonsai and put like moss or uh, Anubius nana petite or some buse uh, or something on that uh, tree, and then it's going to grow in and look just like an actual bonsai, just in your aquarium. It's pretty rad, and we have some very cool pieces in right now. Super neat. Uh, Ah, yes. No, Nicole. Uh, Nicole says, I'm not Dave, but <laughs> try bullying the piece of wood before adding it to your aquarium. Absolutely. Please, if you, uh, you, anyone is more than welcome to, uh, toss their two cents in the comments. Uh, and I'll sit here and, 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 uh, tell you if I agree with you or not. Uh, just like, uh, Joe and I were talking, um, I don't use live bearers as uh, starters anymore, but a lot of people still do. Um, and so we were talking about that earlier. You're allowed to have a different opinion and you're allowed to state it before me. That's totally fine. <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's the great thing about these lives is people get to talk to each other as well. Um, 
Aha, great question, Nicole, again. Uh, do you happen to know of any aquarium shows, expos near Indy? Would love to check out one similar to the Midwest Reptile Expo, uh, but for all things aquatic. Um, yes, but. <laughs> um, so it is, it is. So there's plenty of fish conventions. There's lots of fish conventions. In fact, there's a convention for live bears. There's a convention. There's two conventions or maybe even more for catfish. There's uh, a convention or more uh, for cichlids. Um, and then you have the, um, the new, uh, the new convention coming out, um, uh, or has been out for a few years now anyway, uh, Aquashella. Um, and they, uh, they're really cool too. Um, I actually was, uh, I wanted to go to the Aquashella last year, but that didn't happen because of the pandemic, which brings me to my next point. Uh, they are starting to schedule them, but, uh, the general consensus in the hobby so far has been that there is expectations that a lot of these will still be canceled anyway. That being said, um, the closest Aquashella uh, to Indy is going to be in Chicago. They already have them uh, planned out. In fact, I have a list <laughs> because I was already looking into this uh, in which... Uh, which conventions I might want to uh, show up at and show to you guys and things of that nature um, in either this year or maybe next, uh, something like that. Um, so on the on the schedule, and this is uh, readily available information online if uh, you look into it, but these uh, honestly, fish conventions are not the uh, not the easiest things to look up. So speaking specifically of Aquashella in Chicago, they have that slated for the 14th and the 15th, I believe, uh, of uh, August. Uh, so um, that is Aquashella Chicago. They're also uh, in, the, in the current plans um, is Orlando and Dallas Aquashella as well, happening in, happening in June and October, respectively. But again, closest one to us is going to be uh, the Chicago, uh, August 14th and 15th. And I do highly recommend it. Another decently close one, um, is, uh, the, uh, the catfish one, which I couldn't find. That's, that's the, that's the one I have the hardest time finding out information for, um, is the, uh, the, the Ohio, and they do it every year in Ohio, I believe. Um, and that's, uh, oh, shoot. What do they call that? Anyway, that's a catfish convention. And if someone knows, uh, drop it in the comments, please. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, those are those are great. And then the other one is um, the Live Bearer Convention, American the ALA American Live Bearer Association Convention. Um, and I believe, uh, from what I was looking at, that that's going to be in Detroit again. Uh, the last I don't know if it's always in Detroit. The last time I attended it. It, I believe, was in Detroit. Um, or was it Lansing? Anyway, it's in Michigan. <laughs> but the, this year, they uh, they say they are slated for Detroit. Last time I went, um, there were it was a smaller convention, but it was really fun, uh, and there were actually a lot of cool people there. Uh, as far as uh, like a small convention goes, they had some some great speakers, some bigger names, uh, and I learned a lot, had a good time at the Live Bearer convention a couple years back. Uh, I forget exactly which year I went. Um, but yes, yes, Nicole, they do exist. There's none currently in Indianapolis, um, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to change that soon. Um, I, would, I would love to see something local. Um, now, as far as uh, other conventions, that's just freshwater that I've been talking about. There's also saltwater conventions, um, Reefapalooza, not sure where that's being held, um, and MACNA are the two uh, uh, ones people talk about the most, I suppose. Uh, MACNA is going to be in Atlanta this year. That's uh, saltwater in September. Uh, and also, uh, they are doing a mini Macna next month, uh, February 27th. 
Um, it's going to be a little one day online convention um, with some speakers um, and some uh, and some what do I call them? Meetups, hangouts, um, and it's all going to happen online uh, virtually. So uh, just uh, pop in um, Macna, um, M-A-C-N-A, uh, or even more specifically, Mini Macna, um, if you want more information on that. And now you have all the information I know about conventions coming up. Um, so again, nothing here in Indy and nothing necessarily in this state. How ever um at, at least for for like an expo like large event like that um what i do want to point you towards locally is the monthly events that do happen in indy um we've got the circle city aquarium club and uh the indiana marine aquarium society as well in moss so ccac in moss um freshwater and saltwater respectively they both, I believe, put on monthly meetings um, when they're allowed to. They will do them in person. Um, and they have also been streaming um, when they can't do it in person. They're, they're streaming. And even when they can do it in person, they've also been streaming those as well. Um, so you can jump in at your comfort level there. Um, but yes, you can absolutely show up to these things. Circle City Aquarium Club, uh, they've got a page and a group on uh, here on or on Facebook. Um, I'm on YouTube now. <laughs> uh, but over on Facebook, you can check them out. Uh, they also have a website. Um, it's a CCACAQ club or something like that. Um, I will uh, drop it in the comments when I'm done here. Actually, might as well do that now. It's the CircleCityAQClub.org um, is, is that for freshwater. Uh, and then InMoss.org, uh, I believe, uh, for the Saltwater Club. Uh, and again, monthly meetings, um, and at the end of each meeting, if you are a member, they do uh, auctions uh, for members, mini auctions, and then uh, a few times a year, uh, they will do large public op uh, auctions as well, um, in which you can find fish, plants, equipment, um, it just a bunch of stuff for dirt cheap auction prices. Um, back in the day, we don't do this anymore, uh, but back in the day, a few of the employees would actually go to these auctions uh, and we would, we weren't like high bidding on anything, but if no one was bidding on something, we'd go grab those fish for dirt cheap and bring them back to the shop because <laughs> no, no one wanted to take them home. So no one was, no one was complaining. Um, you know, either, either you didn't want to get them in the auction or you brought them and didn't want to take them back and put them in your tank. You brought them for a reason, right? So uh, we would go, uh, we would go to the, the club auctions and kind of clean up the unwanted at the end and, and hang out with them. Uh, and, and yeah, that was, that was fun times, but those are your options for, uh, for local meetings uh, on a regular basis. Uh, but if you're looking for a much larger, like con, con you know, style setting, uh, there are those options that we discussed earlier. Thank you, Nicole. That is a fantastic question. Uh, and obviously something I was able to spit about for a while because I love conventions. They're great. I've been to, uh, I've been to multiple uh, ACAs, American Cichlid Association conventions. Uh, we hosted one of those in Indianapolis in 2012. Um, we were one of the main sponsors uh, for that, and that was such a good time. In fact, Indy's uh, uh, ACA convention is still talked about at current uh aca conventions is one of the one of the better ones that happened um and and that's that's just super fun I was there i was totally there it was good times um let's see here uh yep and then uh we were also uh ryan was jumping in about the uh the purigen uh and soaking and boiling uh that driftwood uh with uh with hansel basically the stuff that uh i, I covered afterwards without uh seeing that you'd already responded love this crew good job guys <laughs> um yeah aquashella in chicago is cool 
Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And now everyone's talking about uh, Aquashella. And yes, uh, Ryan brings up a good point. Aquashella is for both salt and fresh. You are absolutely correct. Aquashella, so Aquashella is really one of the first ones that has done this and hasn't been specific for either fresh or salt water. They are more uh, encompassing. Um, and I personally have not been to a actual saltwater specific convention, uh, again, personally, uh, but it, I've always been more of a freshwater guy. I'm hoping to change that this year. We will see how the, uh, uh, how this all plays out with these conventions, but I am, uh, I'm very excited to hopefully, go check some of these out. And if you guys are unable to attend, uh, I want to show that to you guys as well. So, um, here's, uh, here's seeing what the future holds. Um, Ryan says CCA should see, CCAC should see, <laughs> CCAC should see. Absolutely. If they can get some of the Akashella speakers to make the trip, a uh, short trip down to Indy from Chicago. And actually they have before. Um, but that's, uh, that's way more complicated than you may think, <laughs> even though it's just a couple hours down. Um, it, it is definitely more complicated than you might think, but, uh, we have had plenty of, um, top tier, uh, speakers come through the club as well. Um, we've had some pretty prestigious people uh, come through and actually do talks uh, at the uh, Circle City Aquarium Club. Uh, and I'm sure as well as uh, in Moss. Um, I just had, I personally know that, uh, that CCAC does, um, brings in speakers um, a lot, if not uh, every, and I know they try to do it every month. Um, but, it's, you know, it's obviously not like the the heavy hitting household household names of the aquarium hobby every time but yeah they bring in some really cool people uh, and i've learned a lot from going to to those uh, ccac meetings which uh now that they're online i need to jump into a little more often but uh that's uh that's a project for me for the future uh, Ooh yeah Nicole says, and speaking of rele relevant events, I cannot wait to see the reef photo competition finalists. First time I entered, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Glad you entered. Uh, and speaking of which, glad you brought it up. Today is the last day for uh, our photo contest submissions. Uh, the theme is new growth. And people have been pretty creative in the ways they're showing that uh, or trying to convey that uh, in their pictures. Uh, so we do this every month uh, and there will be a new theme every month. Uh, you have till midnight this evening to get those submissions in. Uh, and you're going to go over to our Facebook page uh, and just message those uh, submissions to our, our Facebook page just directly. Uh, if you do win, uh, we do uh, have you email us a higher res uh, or the highest res you have available um, to, to attempt to use that a little better. But, uh, but yeah, check that out. Check out the Facebook page. Check out our Instagram. Check out our Twitter. Uh, you're on YouTube. So if you haven't checked out our channel there uh, or all the videos we have, uh, we've been putting stuff out for longer than a year, but we've been actually consistent for uh, this last year and we do not plan on uh, slowing down at all. In fact, today we were just talking about <laughs> already remodeling my studio. So fun, fun times. All right, I think uh, that is going to, I haven't had any, um, any request, people talking about salt water at all. Uh, and it, I, I don't want to necessarily bore you, but <laughs> if, if it's not going to be relevant to you, uh, I know I've got plenty of people watching now and later, uh, but saltwater um, clowns, clowns, your standard perculas, oscillaris, they're going to be a great starter fish. I know we were talking about starter fish, um, your chromis and damsels, any goby that doesn't sand sift is going to be good. Um, yeah, but we kind of already talked about how I start uh, saltwater anyway. So I'm going to uh, call it a day. I appreciate all of you coming in and uh, joining me. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them below and I'll come back through and answer them. Uh, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.